this enchanted lullaby. There is no truth until you decide what truth is. And each person should find that truth out for his or herself. You know what? Global family, look in the mirror. I want you to take a good look. You are the champion, the hero of your story. No matter how much praise you may give some of us who may help you on this journey, it is you who has to walk it. We are only a catalyst to help you see. Person should find that truth out for his or herself. Greetings, everyone. I hope you are doing well within your space and time. Tonight, we will be discussing how to manifest in our personal realities. But before we begin, as many of you know, the Medicine's Thought Form Generators, which is Dr. Dilbert Blair and myself, tend to put forth forms of thought which has the known ability to change the world within, but also create change in the external world around us. Not only from the events, but the podcast, you all have noticed changes in the matrix afterward to compensate for the shift into balance, to try to put it again out of balance. This is one of those podcasts. It will create a tidal wave of change, and in this change, bring us closer into oneness. So let us take a brief moment to rhythmic breathe, centering ourselves as we collectively journey deep into our vortexes, gathering energy for collective expansion. So here we go. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Hold it. Exhale through your mouth. Let's do it two more times. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Hold it. Exhale through your mouth. One more time. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Hold it. Hold it a little longer. Exhale through your mouth. All right. At this point, I'm sure many of you have read on the Medicine or website part one and part two of how to manifest. Part one, so you want to manifest fourth dimensional structured resonating vortexes, which was concerning being oneself with focused intent. Part two, a compass at zero point, okay, which was concerning pinpointing within the exact direction to acquire the change, and this starts by being balanced within oneself. Since we are in the supposedly technological age, let's be in sync and inner balance what is technologically taking place around us with and how it relates to what could possibly be going on within us. We will start with the technology around us first and then bring it into human form. What I'm about to state will be known by many of you, but let's take our time and discuss some basics so that all of us can be on the same page. The computers that most of us use have some form of operating system, and this operating system would be more than likely Windows or Mac if using a desktop computer, but if using a mobile device, Android or iOS. And Operating system, OS, manages computer hardware, such as your printer, mouse, keyboard, and software, such as Word, Excel, video games. 
Within this operating system, again, Windows, Mac, Android, or iOS, there are processes or routines taking place called daemons. A daemon is typically a program that runs as a routine or process in the background, rather than being under the direct control of the user. Typically, you won't know it's there at all, performing its routines cycle after cycle. Sometimes, though, a daemon will go rogue, creating issues within this process or mysteriously trying to elevate its position within this OS. And when this happens, the failsafe of the OS is to crash. The word daemon sounds eerily similar to demon. Let's look up the etymology of the word. But first, what does that mean to look up the etymology? To look up the etymology of a word means you're looking up the origin of the word and the way in which that meaning has changed throughout history. So you are looking up the oldest recorded use of a word and how it was used at that time versus how it may be used now. So what is the etymology of daemon? An evil spirit, malignant, supernatural being, an incubus, a devil. From Latin, spirit, from Greek, daemon, deity, divine power, lesser god, guiding spirit, one's genius. Okay, so there man could be considered one's genius. Lot or fortune. From Proto-Indo-European languages, divider or provider of fortunes or destinies. Okay, so as we see, Daemon has a multitude of meanings from various cultures, but most are similar in referencing the spirit in the unseen. As of today, the typical unabridged dictionary has over 300,000 entries, and we could only imagine how large a dictionary would be if we include all languages going back only a few hundred years. So out of all words to choose for a background process, a routine within your computer, it's quite interesting that the word daemon was chosen for this task. Now, let us move on to the human element in this equation that may need to be balanced. Because if you didn't know, that is what we are doing. We are balancing the equation of oneself. Let us start by talking about the mind, which we will call the mind operating system, MOS. Okay, so for now, MOS is mind operating system. This MOS has many functions, and even though it would seem outwardly that it is in control of the operations of the hardware and software of the body, in fact, it is only a facilitator, not the originator. The MOS has many functions. Some of the main functions are to facilitate the movement of your hardware, eyes, eating mechanics, running, etc., and software, forms of thinking, speaking, the learning of a language and identifying when that language is spoken for interpretation, etc. So in the MOS, which again is the mind operating system, being only a facilitator has a few modes of operation, which include being primarily in receive mode, primarily in transmit mode, or primarily in bi-directional, which is receive and transmit mode. So we're going to start with the first one, which is primarily receive mode. Uh, an example of this, to easy think about it, is think of age zero, so newborn, to about 12 years old, and then again toward the end of life. This mind receives data, but with little to no output. An example is a newborn learning how the world works around them, or an adult who consumes information with little to no inwardly or outwardly expression of the information, whether it be regurgitation or being intellectualized into unique transmittable conversation. The second version would be a transmit mode, okay? So think of people who are primarily in transmit mode between the age of 13 to 25. 
This mind transmits data, but with little to no inwardly consideration or contemplation. This mind leads to communications, which are typically regurgitations of thought forms, whether positive or negative. Negative transmissions are typically shown in spontaneous thoughts and actions that lack self-control and have the tendency to break down society. Positive transformations tend to lead to stronger societies as each member reinforces the perfected thought forms. In the third example is uh, this person is primarily bidirectional. They receive and transmit. Uh, think of ages 13 to close at least to the end of life. Okay. This mind is some form of combination of the previous two modes. This mind can be one of positivity or negativity who gravitates more toward being introverted. It means they're more in the receiver side of the bidirectional spectrum or extroverted, which is the, uh, they transmit more. So the main point here is that it receives data and then transmits it. Previously, we spoke on the computer operating system and processes that go on in the background called daemons. Well, the human mind has similar processes that take place. These processes we call our day-to-day -day routines. These routines can bring about positive outcome or a negative outcome. Sometimes in these routines, there are subroutines underlying mechanics or mechanisms of control. These mechanisms we can call angels if good and demons if bad. Okay? So the MOS, again, is the mind operating system, has the equivalent of angels and demons that work in the background, going mostly unnoticed, causing virtue or mayhem on the user. The routines that are being influenced within the user come from a few different sources individually or some form of combination of them all. These sources include genetics, food and water, air, primary family, mother, father, brother, sisters, extended family, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, the community, educational institutions, religious, spiritual institutions, the media, and life experiences. So these routines that most people have are influenced by one or a combination of what I just stated. If these routines are inner balance, which is positive, then the fruits of them will be positive, which is good internally, externally within one's environment, and furthermore into the greater society. If these routines are out of balance, which is negative, then the fruits of them will be negative, which is bad internally, externally, within one's environment, and furthermore into the greater society. As one becomes older, what consistently takes place is one becoming solidified within their routines for better or worse. Let's focus on the better and why societal change rarely happens to the benefit of all because of the calcification of routines. As mentioned, as one becomes older, one tends to solidify within their routine. In this routine that is solidified, especially if it has led to a life of relaxation and luxury, one within this routine will resist any change to it without even consciously being aware. This subconscious action to actively resist any form of change internally or externally is to keep the good times rolling, as some would say, as a change can lead to the reverse. I mean, that's understandable, right? If everything is good and life is how one wants it to be, wouldn't you resist any change to it? Okay. So it's not that those who are in this set routine necessarily have ill will toward you or anyone else. And it doesn't mean that they don't agree wholeheartedly with the path society needs to be on for the betterment of all. You may have the perfect idea. And you may be putting forth the perfect thought form. And they wholeheartedly agree with it. But at the same time, I'm going to resist it 100% because of <laughs> what I mentioned. They're stuck in their routine. And their routine has worked for them. They don't want to change. 
the fear of changing their routine, the fear of it not becoming better, but it knows diving into hard times is what they are truly afraid of. And as such, will do all they can to resist any form of changing of this routine, even if it means society burning down around them as long as they can stay in that comfortable state that they have built for themselves. You see? Don't we see a lot of that happening around us? Certain change needs to happen. Everyone knows it. There are people who could actually do it. But because certain aspects of it may be unknown, right? <laughs> they don't change it. See? They're comfortable. That's why change typically comes from the younger generations. Lastly, let us come to full understanding with this last concept, which I call breaking of the wheel. A routine is something that is done over and over continuously, hence the name. A routine can be looked at as a cycle, an energy form that circles over itself repeatedly, as if a wheel. If one is in a routine, a cycle, a wheel of thought that needs to change for whatever reason and the change needs to be immediate, maybe even somewhat drastic as if an emergency, then this wheel needs not to be bent, but broken. Breaking of this wheel in most cases is not difficult intellectually, but tends to be rather difficult for some energetically due to being in a lower vibrational routine for so long. As the saying goes, something being easier said than done. Here are some examples of breaking the wheel of one's routine to take it into another energetic space. These examples would be done immediately with no delay as a shock and awe to the wheel to crack and break it. So one has to, this is one example, okay? One has to have their drink or smoke, shrooms or lean daily to turn up. Solution, this is stopped immediately. And help is sought if one inner balancing needs support. So if one needs support uh, because they feel they may relapse, we'll get that support. There's many, there's a few still free programs out there if one needs that support, especially they know to, even to themselves they shouldn't be smoking, drinking, doing shrooms, drinking the lean, and all that other stuff, okay? Example number two. A person wants change and is willing to work for it but they always oversleep, awaking in the afternoon hours. Solution, they get an alarm clock if needed so they can awake at a much earlier time. But this also extends to them going to bed at a reasonable hour for proper rest. Obviously very simple stuff, right? These, these simple changes will start the, the motion of a different type of routine. But let's go deeper here, right? So one is overweight, they overeat and overly states the woe is me as if it's their theme song. Solution, get a gym membership, be in there three to five days weekly on the treadmill, taking it slow, but they at that point are in the right space and so only the good things could come about from this. Also start to diet, cutting the neg negative foods from their routine, okay? Number four, another example, a person wants the world to be better but always looking externally. This person is not a bad person, but they are most, there is most definitely some work that can be done. But this work is always delayed. Solution, get to the inner work, no more excuses or delays, because if what has been stated is true, okay, then the world is depending on you. Another example, this is example number five. One calls for a consultation about their cycles, again, their wheel. And they get the answer that will help to break the wheel to force an energetic change. The next month, they call again, asking the same thing and receiving the same answer. And a few months later, calling about the same thing and receiving the same answer. Never actually even attempting to break the wheel, just romanticizing about the wheel being broken. Solution, get to the work and experience what can only be felt by one who has done the work and one will then ask themselves why they took so long to do it 
it has the feeling of living it is much more satisfying than what one could imagine. Lastly, now this here, the, these examples I gave, they're, they're more gentle, okay? Um, I was trying to think of examples even from some consultations and stuff like that because a lot of people, they think their issue is major, but it's really not as major as they think, and many of them actually come to see that with any, many of the consultations. But uh, here's one right here, which is most definitely a pure example of <laughs> breaking the wheel because you won't change now. Okay, so this is example number six. A person wants a job, but only puts in applications daily on the internet, nothing more. Solution. Years ago, before the world became deeper in despair, people were literally on street corners with nice printed signs stating their qualifications, which is in essence, they were begging for a job, okay? But willing to even somewhat embarrass themselves or some say they did embarrass themselves for the opportunity and guess what i actually contacted some of these people because that blew my mind right many of you know that i've been into metaphysics since i was young all right and so uh in the greater society a lot of over the top kind of metaphysical uh things especially on the positive side you don't really see as much and when i seen this years ago it, it blew my mind for someone because most people are not going to put themselves out there in a way that makes them extremely vulnerable, especially not to the greater society. OK, most people are only going to be vulnerable for the most part in egoism. All right. Or if they have some type of uh, scheme at hand. OK. And if they do it in a bigger way. All right. Uh, but to just truly. You know, you know this, some of the people had on a suit, the lady had on a dress, okay? And to go out there on a, on a major street, okay, or in, in a busy downtown area and have a sign printed, uh, looking for a job, uh, looking to work now, responsible, blah, 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 and have a stack of resumes on the side of you, putting your sign, walking up and down the street like that, I mean, how many people would even hear who are listening to my voice right now would do that? Right? Now, come on now, right? So anyways, I actually contacted uh, some of them personally uh, because, again, I was astounded uh, by the willpower to do something like that. And in every case, they got within their career path that they were looking for. So it was worth it. All right? So think about this. Would you be willing to embarrass yourself begging for a position within your career field many or most would not break the wheel we are back with a great story it's about this man right here david casares he's a web developer homeless out of a job but not for much longer rebecca jarvis here with this story Hey, Georgia, I love this story because this is not your typical job search strategy, but in this case, it turned out to be the perfect pitch for David Casares. It's the photo that launched 200 job opportunities. Unemployed web developer David Casares wearing his finest tie, handing out his resume on a Silicon Valley street, holding this sign. Homeless, hungry for success, take a resume. I told myself all I need is just one person you know, to take my resume and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to give an opportunity to this guy. His sign getting the attention of Jasmine Schofield. If I were in his position, I would want someone to help me. After speaking to him for just a few minutes, she shared his story on social media, writing, Today I saw this young homeless man asking for people to take a resume rather than asking for money. Please RT so we can help David out. Hundreds of job interviews poured in from top tech companies. Netflix, Pandora, Apple, Google, Amazon, um, that I can think of. Bitcoin even offered to relocate him to Tokyo. Casares expressing his gratitude on Twitter, writing, Thank you everyone for the outpouring of support. I am glad to be an inspiration for you all. Casares called it a make or break moment. He says he wanted to keep his head up. He was determined to find a job, but this was his last stop. So. I'm sure some of you are thinking of your own personal situations, uh, which can be given as an example. And feedback can be given to break that wheel. And I want you to think about it and let me know. And if so, we will talk about it. Put it in the comments below, right? Put it out in the comments and um, 
I may even just reply back to it uh, with the wheel breaking strategy or even may recommend a consultation since we do have free versions of the consultations as well. All right. Um, uh, just as long as you don't mind being on the line with others. OK. So as you've seen from the examples, it's simply said and the answer will create change. But it's the person at that point in their journey where these types of changes can take effect here and now. I will say many times over, the past has already happened in most cases. There's nothing that can be done concerning it. And the future has yet to be determined, so there's no point of being filled with anxiety over what ifs. Between those two points resides the now, the right now, the here and now. Let us focus on what we can do now, which then will solidify a routine for the future. And then when one looks back, they see and will be happy because of the growth that came forth from the past. In saying all of this, we can't discount what is happening externally around us. Draconic energies are trying to per pervert every portion of society, which is really no more than a reflection of what they represent. But because of this, this leads to entirely different wheels of routine that can come forth. Some may not be as good, others being a new path which takes humanity into other spaces in the realm whose existence has been hidden, scrubbed from maps, and erased from our Edenic memories. Wouldn't that be nice? There is no truth until you decide what truth is. Each person should find that truth out for his or herself. You know what? Global family, look in the mirror. I want you to take a good look. You are the champion the hero of your story. No matter how much praise you may give some of us who may help you on this journey, it is you who has to walk it. We are only a catalyst to help you see. For his or herself. For his or herself.